and fellow participants. Thank you for organizing the IQ Challenge this year. It's been quite fun being given a chance to code for robotics despite the fact that I'm graduating this year from my school. My name is John Hendry and my online username is Interpause. I'm from Singapore and one of my hobbies is to occasionally make Roblox videos. I'm a jack of all trades in terms of programming and have done stuff from web design to deep learning to robotics. The uh, links to my profile can be seen on the same slide here. In Aiku, I've learned a few things. For example, it's actually quite difficult to model robotics virtually. Like in the simulator, once in a while there were glitches, like the robot just bouncing out of the arena. Other than that, I've gained quite a good C and C++ practice during Aiku because I've actually not coded in C for quite a while. And as the challenge was done virtually, it allowed me to very quickly brush out on my skills while trying to find the optimal solution. Speaking of optimal solutions, I would like to learn from SG3021. She's actually my junior in CCA and she got a better score than me because she taught out of the lines while actually stuck to the lines and therefore saved quite a bit of time. As for how I plan to share my robotics expertise, I'll occasionally return to school and give tips to my CCA juniors or perhaps when I'm in uni, I'll um, join a robotics club that teaches robotics to primary school students and stuff. So in this competition, I joined the Grand Prix U19 category. And as for my strategies, right, they are seen on the slides here. But let me first look at, let's look at the video first. As you can see, the robot is going across the map and has to follow the lines. Um, everyone within my CCA, I know hard coded. But aside from that, there's a few ways to make the challenge easier. One of the things I did was that the robot has six infrared sensors for detecting the line, but I realized that within these six sensors, you could get a total of 11 data points by considering right, cases where both two sensors were activated to be a separate sensor altogether. And this gave me greater fidelity with my sensing, allowing for more accurate line tracking. Another thing I did was buffered color reading. So when you detected a color, instead of immediately triggering whatever code I needed to trigger, I will wait a while to gather more data first until it no longer detected the color and use that to determine the correct course of action. This actually prevented misdetections, which actually plagued quite a few of my initial runs. Another thing you may have noticed about the way my robot turns in the video is that it turns quite quickly and precisely. This is because I used the compass built into the robot for my turning. Finally, you may notice that my steering is quite graceful, and this is because I use differential steering. So instead of turning on the spot, I actually modify the speed of each wheel in order to achieve the desired turning. And the compass turning and differential steering are only possible because of something known as PID control, which stands for proportional, integral, and derivative controls. Basically, by using the error at a moment in time, the previous error, and the accumulated error over time, it allows for robots to make very precise controls of its motors and achieve precise motions. And as you can see, the robot has just managed to finish the timing at two minutes and three seconds. Well, my juniors achieved like one minute, 50 seconds, and I'm happy for them, honestly. Well, anyways, thank you for watching my presentation. Um, Hope you enjoyed other people's presentations and goodbye.